Hello gentles and ladymen, I am Bison Gaming, and this is rather unusual, but I am just by myself today uh, recording this video. Yes. Um, generally, I, I have somebody else with me, but it's currently 2.26 a.m., and that's not really an option. Uh, but today, I have a 2v2 game that I played in competitive. Uh, against people who were relatively higher rank than us uh, w with Steven. And uh, I'm doing the Marines strategy, and Steven is just kind of doing Germany things. And we're against a, a USA player who is doing the new uh, German immigrants start, and Portugal, who is very much so doing doing Portugal things, as Portugal does. Uh, and this was a, a really, really fun game, actually. A little bit of back and forth, a lot of back and forth, actually. Uh, the the, the the battle basically hits just about everybody's base at some point or another, and uh, it was it was a fun one. So I'm I'm here for it, and I hope you guys are too. I'm going to be talking a lot about the state of USA and the two the differences and pros and cons between the two strategies that are employed here, being the Marines and the the uh, German immigrants. Uh, neither of us have picked a deck yet, but that should change momentarily, seeing as uh, we both just have cards. So here's my marine deck. It is my classic marine deck. Uh, this is a fast fortress that goes into a push, uh, that goes into a semi-fast industrial, that goes into uh, heavy cannon spam. And we will see a little bit of that uh, as, as we go through. Um, versus the other USA player who is performing the German Immigrant Start, uh, which is largely an Age 2 focused uh, build order, and uh, it has resurged a lot in popularity recently due to the buff that it receives, but I don't necessarily think that everybody doing the German Immigrant Start is taking the fullest advantage of the new abilities of Germany, and I think that is a cardinal mistake. But here we're going to watch it as it happens. Uh, our USA player here is actually just about to age up right now, actually, using a 10-10. I'm not really sure where his wood went. It doesn't look like he's built anything. Um, did he not collect his wood? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. By the way, he's, go he's doing a 10-10 age up with Delaware, and now he's clearly splitting off his settlers over here. Yeah, where the fuck did his 200 wood go to? Uh, oh, I get it, I get it. He used all of his base wood to send this and just never built a house. I understand. Uh, so, so yeah, German immigrants uh, ships a homestead wagon and makes it so that all of your homestead wagons spawn uh, uh, settler wagons, and your settler wagons have a build limit of 5, and starting in age 2, you can train them for 100 food and 100 wood. Now, he is aging up with Delaware, which gives him a, uh, d which gives him a card that delivers some semi-fattened cows and two, homestead uh, two mill wagons, two homestead wagons, and he also has advanced homesteading in here, which ships to homestead wagons and makes mills uh, provide population and line of sight. Uh, now, the reason I think this is kind of a waste is because uh, you can actually get you just train two settler wagons right from the mill, and then not have to bother with the with, with, with uh, the other terrible shipments of with their generally terrible shipments and bonuses of Delaware, uh, and you can cut Delaware out and just go with the advanced home setting and train two settler wagons, and this frees you up because now you no longer need Delaware, and you can go with something like Pennsylvania, which allows you to get a coin trickle and and, and the Cree and the Coeur de Bois and stuff like that. Uh, which is why I generally think it's it's kind of a waste. But regardless, he's aged up and he's got the 200 XP here plus the 300 at food. Not exactly my favorite age up bonus. Um, I'm I, I, I of course did not 10-10, so my age up is going to be a little bit slower. Uh, but I went with the French immigrants and we're going to see uh, the the Virginia. I'm aging up with Virginia so I can, of course, because you always want to go with Virginia if you're doing a fast fortress. And we're going to see Virginia planning, followed by 700 coin and Virginia General Assembly and 700 wood as per usual. Uh, now let's take a look at our other members here. Actually, I, I really just want to focus in on the USA 
uh, play here. So the advanced homesteading is in. He's getting up these two mills here, and now he's shipping the six semi-fattened cows and two homestead wagons to get his fourth and fifth mill. Uh, if I were him, what I would be doing is spreading these mills out and putting them, like, way out here because they provide a ridiculous amount of line of sight on the map if you if you take advantage of them like that uh but here we go if he could literally already have his five seller wagons right now if he had just trained two of them uh from his three mills here and then instead of getting his five right here with this shipment he could have had them a lot faster and instead ship something like the pennsylvania pound uh, but right now he's going up with hamilton economics which is a very very valuable uh card he's already got his market up so he's gonna get huge economic bonuses and there is 1200 food just chilling on the ground here which is a really big deal i'm not really sure why the mill is going up here but i'm uh, but you know it, it it serves the function of getting the boom and he does his settlers don't have to walk super far even if he doesn't have the greatest line of sight in comes a couple germany raids this is really really going to hurt him especially since he's trying to focus on a boom and he did so with a 10-10, which is, I think, another odd choice because if you go with Delaware, you do gauge up fast and you can go with that, but he's clearly trying to play a hyper-economic playstyle that is currently at 25 vils, and, and the 10-10 does not suit that. Uh, but in either case, he has a forward villager down here with a barracks, and he's getting five regulars, and he's doing a very good job of just being present in the base, looking around for for, for troops and trying to stall for time. Uh, you can also... Uh, I'm currently in the middle of aging right now. I have six Minutemen uh, that are down here ready to help out with these regulars after going a little bit of treasure hunting. And here is our state capitals that we go up a little bit faster. Uh, very, very interesting game to just see two completely different styles of USA play. Uh, we have some aggressive age 2 stuff. Uh, sending eight state militia. Unfortunately, uh, I I don't personally. Again, he he did play well, so the, I, I I my criticisms are not necessarily, uh, you know set in stone here um but what i would be thinking about right now is yes the units would be very very nice but he has ulans running around in his base and he has no forward shipment points so this what does the eight state militia accomplish if i were him i would be thinking about perhaps springfield armory 700 wood or virginia general assembly uh, but in come the state militia, regardless. He can pop the Minutemen, which he is doing, and that will be enough force to fight off the Uons. Uh, perhaps he just needed a little bit of muscle to keep the... In which case, I suppose this was not a wasted shipment. And I should really shut my mouth, because you know what? It works. He took out all the raiders in his base with those uh, by using those uh, state militia in conjunction with the Minutemen, even though they are both countered by cavalry. So you know what? I was absolutely wrong. Now his Portugal buddy is here, I'm in age 3 by now, and I have a, a decent chunk of units, not the craziest amount, uh, but I'm building a couple more TCs, just a little bit in the forwards direction, uh, and we are just waiting for the rest of my TCs to get built uh, before the big marine pop happens. Uh, now to take stock, he has been harassing, but he does not have a whole bunch of military right now, and that's because of the counter raids that happened from Germany, which resulted in most of his forces being back here. Now, realistically, most of his forces would be back here anyways, because USA doesn't really have an easy method of getting a forward shipment point early in the game. Uh, but he is still training regulars, and regulars are just absolute beasts of units. Uh, it looks like- did he sell Springfield Armory at some point? No, he didn't. Why do they have extra to oh, they're under the flag, of course. Uh, absolute beast of a unit here. 14 range, musketeer in age 2 is just nuts. Uh, these raids are merciless. I did not realize how- how crazy good uh, Steven was at raiding during this game, because we were mostly focused on the defensive aspect, seeing all of this in his base all the goddamn time. Uh, so here comes the TC, which means, and, and the Hussars are popping, the Culpepper Minutemen are coming out, uh, and the counterattack is about to begin.
in come the Marines. Uh, now there's a fair number of crossbows here, and the crossbows are not really going to be accomplishing anything because nothing here has the light cavalry or heavy infantry tag, uh, which means these crossbows are just essentially dead weights. And I get the points of why he had them, um, but as soon as they realized that I was going Marines, I, I would have stopped making light infantry as they just do not counter Marines. Uh, and, and, you know, Germany obviously is not going to have very many pikemen out in this scenario, so the, the crossbows are a bit of a wasted resource. Uh, but regardless, they do have a large number of troops, and that counts for something. And the wasted resource is not that wasted when they do have 16 attack, which is better than that of a skirmisher at base level. So it still it still functions. Uh, down goes the forward base. Uh, let's take stock real quick of of the uh, of the economic. It looks like he's shipped. Um, did he? It looks like he has by this point shipped his Delaware Blues for six or seven regulars. Uh, right here, he got six of them, uh, which is a, a Delaware Blues very cool shipment. It is a scaling shipment. Unfortunately, the best way to take advantage of scaling shipments is to use Virginia plans, and you can't use Virginia plans with Delaware, so um, I find that this, yes. it, it's just another reason that I don't like Delaware. Uh, but it seems to work for him, and he does have a solid force, and he's had a solid force the entire time. Uh, but now he, he's going to be focusing on upgrades and economy, probably boosting himself up to age 3 would be my guess. He has a massive surplus of food, and realistically he could just sell a little bit of food right now and, and age up, which is probably the the play that I would do in this scenario, but I am not a top-level player, and I'm pretty sure his elo was higher than mine, so who am I to say? <laughs> uh, over here, I have just received the three Gatling guns, and now we are assembling all of our forces for a big push right up the center, because we know this town center is here. Uh, Portugal has... Uh, upgraded the trade line. Did he send, um, no, no House of Braganza, but he did upgrade the trade line for Stagecoach, uh, it looks like, and he's got uh, two trade posts along this route here. Uh, about to be one, unfortunately, for him. Uh, I don't think... The, 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 the stagecoach is a valuable upgrade and it is not something that we even noticed that he did throughout the game. Uh, but you want to be careful with the stagecoach just because if you have a situation like this where the this is just like in our territory, then your your stagecoach is benefiting us for half of the, the supply that it is for you. Um, but he's in age 3 now and he's immediately switching to castors. He's just letting us burn this base, trying to maybe get an upgrade, but that's not going to happen. Uh, and, and he's just immediately switch, shipping to shipping castors. And he, this Portugal player, let me tell you, he is damn good at, at microwing his castors. I have to give him credit for that. Uh, he's population doubt, so uh, obviously all of these look dark and doubt, but really the only one that's been sent is eight castors, because I'm pretty sure he just got here at age three. But thus far, all he's sent is Fatoriosa, uh, eight crossbows, 700 gold, and, and eight dudes. Now he's he's shipping seven more, uh, and he's just gonna probably focus on dragoon production, or perhaps getting his economy up to snuff in this case. But while he's doing that, uh, he sent his army down around back over here uh, to try to take out RTC. Uh, this is not a battle, however, that he really, really wants to take, uh, as as we have enclosed around his forces with with the right counters, and it's just not gonna be looking good for him. Now, Tyrant is just starting to age up to three right now. His next shipment was, in fact, the state capital, uh, which is what I would have done. Uh, and so, yeah, he's, he's going to be going up to age three momentarily. I expect to see statehood here in a second. Uh, really, really insane that you can just basically send this and get 600 XP out of it and a fast age up. And that, that's all it provides. It's just here. Fast age up and the shipment pays for itself because you get 300 for state capital and if you use it for statehood then you get 300 xp 
going into H3, which means the shipment provided you with 600 XP total. Uh, which, let's see how many he needs here. He needs 150 XP right now. Uh, this, this is 150, which is about an eighth. So, that is all in all about uh, about 60%. So there's a little more than an eighth. That's all in all about 60% of his total shipment mass. But we have a big battle going here. Uh, me and Steven are pushing in. We have a big mass of Gatling guns, a big mass of marines, and a big mass of war wagons. The war wagons are mostly here as a just-in-case, but nobody here is really employing heavy amounts of cavalry. And in fact, these are not particularly uh, heavy cavalry civilizations, and yet the war wagons do hold their own against musketeers just fine, uh, as long as they don't get stuck in melee. It is unfortunate that war wagons have a melee uh, resistance instead of a ranged one, but you know what? They they have 500 HP and 42 attacks, so it's, it's really not that bad. <laughs> what else can you ask for, really? Uh, now we're just at 1550, and I've hit the industrial age. Oh, yeah, I've just hit the industrial age. Uh, just as uh, the other USA player has hit the fortress, which means he is no longer going to be outclassed military-wise by the rest of the fight. Uh, at least not as hard, because my marines at this point have just chat attacks. Um, but... Uh, his first shipment in H3, I expect to be Gatling guns, but I am not positive on that. He could also send the uh, 5th, uh, 54th Massachusetts Volunteers, which would also be a very, very solid shipment to have right now. Uh, now, we destroyed that town center, but these this big mass of Casadors here uh, that the Portugal player is maintaining just is doing such a great job of coming in and coming out just when it needs to. Uh, he's keeping his losses to a minimum, really, really taking advantage of that 4.5 speed that the Casadors have. Such an amazing unit. Yeah, there it is. The 54th Massachusetts uh, Volunteers is probably the best thing he could send at this point. He's definitely got the food for it. He needs to use it up, uh, and he, he needs to get his units upgraded, and that's a great way to go about it. Uh, so I, I'm definitely on board for that. Uh, and we are regrouping temporarily. I'm at 51 Marines at this point. Uh, I have sent, uh, by this point, Minutemen Companies which enables uh, the, the levy to do uh, conscription instead, which delivers 16 Minutemen instead of 6. Very, very big deal. Uh, and we're producing Hussars. We just got our first factory down, uh, and after a little bit, that'll be on heavy cannons. But not yet. And everybody is just kind of posturing a little bit. Me and Steven are definitely thinking that we have the, the huge advantage here, but we are underestimating our opponents here. Uh, USA is the one who is who is clearly behind, and this is why I think that you what you really want to... He, oh, he's got a big mass of regulars. Where did these come from? Uh, and th this is one of the things where, like, I really do think that this could have been solved by taking longer in age one, chopping a hundred wood, and and instead uh, and, and going for um, uh, taking a bit long an extra one in in, in age one chopping a that that extra hundred wood for the house uh, and, and not shipping and not aging up with Delaware but it is what it is as expected his next best shipment that he is sending is rolling on Sillery. this is a very good move and now he's got a huge mass of regulars coming in. Uh, while these these Casadors just take advantage of their high speed and range to just pick everything off little by little, uh, we have been completely pushed out of, of purple space and are in full retreat mode uh, at this point. Uh, and we are unsure how far they are going to follow us, but it looks like they are following us all the way back to our base at this point. Uh, so, we, so we are just in full retreat mode. Oh, I say that, but we turn and fight. Uh, not necessarily to our benefits. <laughs> They're just picking us off and picking us off, really taking advantage of the regulars' range as well here. The regular is such a good unit. Uh, and now they're starting to push into my base, so we've started in Steven's base and moved up to Purple's base, where we destroyed his, his TC, uh, and we destroyed three TCs at this point, actually, and now we're going back into my base. <laughs> Now they're trying to focus down this already damaged TC. This TC is not long for this world, so let's be real here. 
I'm just trying to, to keep firing, but keep myself safe. But uh, these Cassadors are, are going to be the, the ones to chase us. And God, this guy is so, so good with his Cassadors. Now he gets to see one of my biggest weaknesses in play here, which uh, is just that when there's when I am focused on countering the enemy military in, in small raids, I can maintain my villagers very, very well. But when I am still on all natural resources, uh, 20 minutes into the game with 50 plus bills, um, 40, 45 around in, in, uh, in this case. I'm so bad at maintaining settlers. It's one of the things that I think uh, I need to, to fix in, in my overall gameplay Orders. is that I'm just very, very bad at maintaining settlers and keeping them away from the enemy army when I have huge amounts of settlers and large armies. So look at this. Both of these settlers are going straight into combat here uh, against uh, against my will. Uh, but not against my inputs. <laughs> we have two factories. Uh, they have been put on heavy cannons, and uh, we're just at this point. I just said, "Hey, we're going to we're gonna wait. We're gonna let just let him burn down whatever he wants for a little bit, and we're gonna get some heavy cannons, and then we're gonna fight back." Is is kind of what I what I told Stephen. Oh, look! All my settlers going into combat. No, <laughs> I lost so many settlers. Uh, but yeah, here, here we let's let's take a look back at our our friends Tyrant. Uh, he's aging up to age four right now. Uh, he's got a shipment saved up. He's saving it for age four. I'm not sure what he's aging up with. What is he aging up with? California. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. That's what I aged up with as well. Uh, you get that free TC and the extra build limit, so you can get that fourth CC. So very very nice. And immediately going for California Gold Rush. This is a very, very cool card, and I really, really like the idea of going for California Gold Rush before even the factories. Uh, but what you want to do with it is, just before California Gold Rush arrives, you want to... Oh, that's, that's not great. But you want to just load all of your TCs with villagers, uh, because even when you can, can no longer queue the villagers, villagers that you have queued uh, will stay queued even after it starts producing... Uh, e even after it starts producing, uh, what is it, uh, settlers for free. So you essentially get double production out of all of your town centers temporarily. Uh, and you also, of course, get this nice, nice 5,000 natural coin, which is just amazing. Yes. He's got all of his workers already going there, so this, this to, to take immediate advantage. A little too early, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, nothing he can really do about that, though. He he put them in the town center, and yeah, there there he goes. Whatever it takes to get the job done. Realized his little uh, his little goof up there, uh, and now he is about to have four town centers. Uh, just producing settlers for free for a while, and now he's going straight for the factory. He's trying to play it as economic as possible. He needs to do a little bit of catch-up, however, because he has the same villagers as me. Now, technically, he has five more, because five of these are, are settler wagons. Uh, but I've been in age four for a good while at this point, and have quite a few other upgrades, like already having both of my factories and uh, losing this heavy cannon right here. Uh, kind of sucked, but I really didn't care just because I have two more and uh, make that three more. Uh, I, I I remember saying to Steven in this moment, "Oh, he just killed one of my uh, one of my heavy cannons with dragoons. I bet he feels safe right now, but he needs a hell of a lot more dragoons than he realizes he ever will." <laughs> Down goes the the yellow explorer trying to build a trade post. We have a good mass of uh, land wares and war wagons for a pretty cool skirm goon combo. Uh, and oh, look at that! There's another TC there, so that's that's got to get fixed. Portugal's got another TC up here. He's about to lose. How many TCs of his have I destroyed at this point? Jesus, I destroyed one up here, I think earlier as well. Um, but I just, it feels like I've just been like bullying this guy's town centers. Uh, but he's he's going heavy on the dragoons. He's shipping dragoon combat, which he really really needs to. Uh, and what, what, what he needs even more than that is Colburns. I think Colburns are are the play here. They are a little hyper specialized, and he doesn't realize just how many heavy cannons I'm about to have. As uh, by this point, I have sent Knox artillery train. Or no, I have not sensed. Oh wait, that's that's not me. Uh, I still I, I have. 
I, I have sensed Nox artillery trained, so these uh, have 570 HP and they train lickety split, let me tell ya. Uh, but we go up for some raiding in Hussars. Okay, here's, here's that northern town center that I mentioned. And oh, look at that! It's another purple town center that I can destroy. But this poor guy was just not allowed to keep his town centers up at, at, at any point in this game. Uh, Red's here, he's got uh, still veteran units, but, you know, who can blame him? You know, it, he's he's been under a, a, just a little bit of pressure throughout this game and, and requiring uh, the, to himself to help his buddy. You know, you can't really blame the guy. <laughs> uh, Dragoons came up and saved uh, this, and saved a couple of these settlers, but they did not save the TC. And it's now they are trying to, uh, he's just trying to get 500 wood so we can get another TC up is, is basically his desire here. But what he really, really needs is coal burns. And I think uh, it start, it's going to dawn on him momentarily just how much he needs those coal burns. Uh, he thinks he can probably deal with all the dragoon with, with all the cavalry just with dragoons, which uh, is, is fair. You know, dragoons are very, very good. But... There are a lot more heavy cannons than than he realizes. Uh, no, well, there's another CC gone. <laughs> uh, he was just not allowed to make TCs. Yeah, that we have. We're up to four heavy cannons now. There's over two thousand HP's worth of artillery chilling here. Uh, but this guy, once again, just keeping his Casadors useful the entire game and yet keeping them out of the reach of the artillery. I had been trying to pin down his Casadors the entire game with my artillery, and he never let me have them. He, th this guy was an absolute pro with his Casadors, kept them, kept them well out of reach, but always in combat. Very, very, very good. Uh, but, but now we're up to 2,500. Um, HP here worth of artillery and it's it's not looking good. It's not looking very good anymore at all uh, Closer to 3,000 HP in artillery here uh, Finally getting the artillery foundry up recognizes that he just can't get more TC's up right now uh, But it's looking like it's pretty much game over at this point uh, Red is finally going down. He's got uh, too, he, he's a little too focused on heavy infantry, which do well against marines uh, in pretty much a one-to-one -one kind of sense, but not against landwares, which is what the core of this of the, of this force is built up of. Uh, the the vet castors are escaping, and it's only a matter of time. His T purple's TC is down again. <laughs> Uh, I think that's probably the 7th or 8th TC of his I've destroyed this game. And Purple has called its game there. Uh, here we have uh, one factory trying to produce heavy cannons. Uh, it's, he's got one out already, but you know, too little too late. Uh, and he's, he's shipping United States Army and Industrial Revolution. Uh, he has a pop of Minutemen ready to go, not quite sending it just yet, uh, but it's it's too late at this point. His, his, his ally has backed out, and we're about to get 18 ELO. I knew they were already dead, but I just wanted the satisfaction <laughs> of seeing them all die, since those, those Castadors had pestered us the entire game. And here we have, you know, two completely different styles of USA play, which I thought was pretty interesting to watch. Um, there were a couple, this was a solid build order from USA, but there are a couple things that I can see to be improved on, uh, because the way he is playing it is very similar to the old style of, of, of German immigrants, just minus the seven sheep and one homestead wagon card, uh, which is okay, but it's, it's not ideal anymore. And and he could have saved himself two shipments instead of one uh, by just spending 400 resources on, on two uh, of the settler wagons out of a mill in right as he hit the second stage and gotten fi his five settlers quicker, gotten a more economic H1, and gone with Pennsylvania Pound instead. And it just probably would have been a lot better for him. But that's it for today, gentles and ladymen. Uh, I hope you learned something about USA uh, from this video. Uh, have a great day and goodbye.